It's First Chapter Friday from the Alameda Free Library. In this edition, I'm going to read part of Partly Cloudy by Juanita S. Davis. <clears throat> Published by Catherine Teagan Books. Here is part of the first chapter. And here's the introduction. For everyone who already knows, there's never a bad time to be a good neighbor. And to those just learning how, you got this. The barometer plunges. I love the little illustrations in there. It should have been raining. There should have been thick slate-colored slate clouds piled up against a pewter-colored sky. There should have been sharp, cold winds whistling and silver-bright stabs of lightning. Instead, it was a bright, sunny June in California morning, and Madeline Thomas was cranky. Normally on the first day of summer, Madeline would have been pretty thrilled. Summer was for unlimited reading and eating all the strawberries she could fit into her mouth. Summer was for sleeping in and ice cream trucks. But Madeline wasn't prepared to be thrilled about summer just yet because she was still thinking over the last school year. Sixth grade had been terrible. Even before school began in last August, things had started going wrong. First, Madeline's dog Lucy had died. Then her best friend Avery had moved far away to Winters. After that, Madeline found out all the stomach aches she had were, be were because she was lactose intolerant. And then on top of that, Madeline's dad was laid off from the job he'd had for years and years. Madeline and her parents had to move from their cozy cute townhouse to an older house on the other side of town where the rent was less expensive. Madeline had to change schools, too, and Robinson Howard Middle School wasn't even a little bit nice. It was big and gray, and the lights in the library had dead bugs in them. The cafeteria was huge, and without Avery, Madeline never knew who to sit with. Her first day, there was a huge food fight, and she got spaghetti in her hair. The day a kid named Mark brought a gun in his backpack to show around was the worst. People were screaming. Teachers were panicking. Madeline forgot everything she had learned in, a shoot, in shooter drills and ran out of the cafeteria into the bathroom and hid on a toilet seat, choking down sobs and hoping no one came in. Madeline survived the school year and Lucy dying and Avery moving and never having dairy ice cream again without taking a pill. But she was determined never, ever, ever to go back to Robinson Howard Middle School again which her mom said was fine. What do you mean it's fine? Madeline blurted, twisting around in her seat at the table. It's been a rough year for all of us, babe, mom said, tilting the pan and swirling the eggs as, she, as they cooked. She looked up and flashed Madeline a smile, her brown cheeks dimpling. Skies are clearing, though. Your dad and I have a plan. Great, Madeline rolled her eyes. She knew all about mom and her weather metaphors. The winds of change are blowing, was what she'd said when she'd told Madeline they were leaving Goodhill. Your dad and I have a plan, was mom speak for, we're changing something else. And change wasn't something Madeline wanted to deal with at 7 a.m. on a Sunday. She was only up at that hour because daddy was catching a flight to Cambridge in Massachusetts for a Monday job interview, and mom wanted the family to eat together before he left. As soon as he was on the way to the airport, Madeline was going back to bed. She yawned and gave in to her curiosity. What's the plan, Mom? Robinson Howard is the only middle school around here. That was true, not counting the local girls' Catholic school, Sacred Heart. Madeline loved their sharp blazers and tartan skirts, but hadn't liked the idea of wearing white knee socks every single day, just like 200 other 7th grade girls. Now Madeline kind of wished she was, that she were Catholic just a little bit. Blazers at least weren't bullies, or sorry, weren't bullets. It's going to take strategy and a little more teamwork, Mom said, putting the hot skillet on the metal trivet to protect the tabletop. But there might be another option for next year. Madeline straightened. What option? You're going to teach me at home? Oh, no thanks, Mom said laughing. You're too smart for me already. Listen, babe, don't worry about it, all right? Something is going to work out. Just wait and see. Madeline sighed. She hated waiting for anything. Fortunately, just then, Madeline's father rolled his luggage into the kitchen and 
Then there was sourdough toast, eggs, and sliced avocado to distract her. Ten minutes after she'd hugged and kissed her father and stood in the driveway to wave goodbye, Madeline was back under her snuggly flannel comforter and cuddling down with a book when she heard the house phone ring. She almost didn't answer it. No one ever called the landline except robocallers and people asking questions about politics. Mom and Daddy didn't use it. They always had their cell phones, but Madeline got nosy and got up after the phone rang three times. Thomas residence, she said, a little winded from her dash across the hall. Macy, where's my worthless nephew? How come he don't call me on my birthday? The voice was strident. This is Madeline, not Macy, Madeline corrected. Mom's not here right now, is this? Oh, little Madeline, you sound just like your mom. How you doing? This is your Papa Lobo. So where's that daddy of yours? I thought it was you, Madeline grinned. Papa Lobo was Madeline's great uncle, the brother of her grandfather, Colin, or Grandpa Collie, as the cousins had called him since they were small. Papa Lobo had followed his brother to California where they were young men, when they were young men. And though Grandpa Collie had gone home to Louisiana when he retired, Papa Lobo was still a couple of hours away in Sheldon. How are you, Papa Lobo? How you think I am? I'm 73. I'm an old, old man, Jay, he said, and Madeline felt giggles rising at his tone. Happy birthday, old, old man, Madeline teased. I'm sorry, but Dad's not here. He's on his way to the airport. He's got another interview. Oh, that's right, that's right. Well, I guess I'll have to wait on him to call me then, the old man said. You tell him to call me when he gets home, you hear? You don't have to wait, Madeline said quickly. You have his cell number, right? Or you can send him an email. He'll get it on the plane. Don't matter, Papa Lobo said abruptly. I gotta go. I got my poker game. You be sweet, Madeline, and tell that mama of yours I said hey. The line disconnected and Madeline kept smiling as she hung up. She didn't know her great uncle that well, but she liked Papa Lobo. He was a little different than most people. Papa Lobo wrote letters on paper and didn't use a computer. He read a paper newspaper all the way through and listened to talk shows on the radio, and he didn't text ever. Instead of driving his truck all the time like most adults, he rode a wide, tired bicycle with a big basket around his town instead. Mom said it was because he was a small town nonconformist and had done things this way forever. Madeline thought Papa Lobo just liked to be contrary, as Grandpa Collie put it. Madeline knew Papa Lobo wouldn't call Daddy back, that was for sure. Daddy would have to call him, or Papa Lobo would never let him hear the end of it. Later that evening, when Daddy called from his hotel in Cambridge, her mother put the call on speaker, and Madeline passed her message along. Daddy, you forgot Papa, Lobo, Papa Lobo's birthday. Madeline heard her father's breath exhale in a hiss. Ah, oh, man, I remembered this morning, but I forgot already. Thanks, he paused. So you had a nice talk with him? What's going on with the old boy? No, we didn't talk for very long, Madeline said. He said he had poker. Daddy snorted, poker? He cheats, you know that? That's how he always wins. Him and those old dudes he plays with all cheat. A lot of them. Madeline giggled. Papa Lobo had inherited a couple of Grandpa Collie's old friends and turned them into a poker club. He should move to Louisiana. Grandpa Collie says he and his retired friends play all week. Nah, Uncle Lo won't go back. He says he can't see the sense of hurricanes every year. Guess he likes earthquakes just fine. Daddy laughed. We'll drop by and see him tomorrow night for dinner, Mom said, rejoining the conversation. Good idea, Daddy said. Take Madeline over, bring him a birthday cake, and make him eat a salad so he can complain about it. I'd better call him before I forget again, Daddy said. Madeline grinned. She didn't really mind salad, but hearing Papa Lobo complain about the way Mom was vegetarian and she didn't eat enough to keep body and soul together was pretty funny. As long as Madeline knew there was cake, hanging out with Papa Lobo was just fine with her. We're going to stop there. This one sounds really fun. I hope that, in, uh, that you enjoy it and you can find it from the Alameda Free Library. See you next time.